Hello, Kerbalots, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Well, as you guys may know, I don't fly space planes or any kind of aircraft in that matter. That's because I am scared of what might happen. So I've decided, here we go. We'll, we'll bite the proverbial bullet and uh, do some aerogymnastics with it. I suppose. <laughs> what do we, I don't know. Anyway, whoops, it is it. Wrong key. We'll go ahead and try and build our own space plane. This is the Ares A3. I'm just testing it out to see what an aircraft should fly like. Nice, responsive, easy to fly, as long as you've got the SAS on. Anyway, so now I know what to expect from an aircraft. Let's go ahead and try and build our own, shall we? To the, not to the VB, sorry. To the space plane hangar. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we need is the Mark 1 cockpit, because I'm not going to build anything big. This, hopefully, guys, will be the result of me building an SSTO, which a lot of people have asked me for in the past as, as well. And an SSTO, if you don't know, is a single stage to launch system. So, anyway, let's first start off with our aerodynamics, because that is quite hard. Okay, let's see what engine we need. Basic jet engine. Oh, okay. No, that's too small. So, okay, the turbofan engine we need. Okay, I do know one thing in KSP. You need... Because these fuel tanks have only liquid fuel in them. They don't have any oxidizer. You need something to burn the liquid fuel with. And oxygen is normally the thing that you need to burn it with. So what have you got? Air brakes? No. Ram jet intakes? No. That, that, I think that's for the ram jet engines. Just little ramp intakes. We'll do one of them, I think. Should we put it on the wings or should we? I tell you what. I think that looks cool. I like that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So now we've got our engine in place. We've got our tanks. We've got the intake. And I know that uh, center lift and center mass matter. How? I don't remember. I remember how one has to be in front of the other. And I can't remember, so let's see what we can do. Okay, so where was the wings that one we had? Okay. Let's put the symmetry to two. Let's put them on there. Let's, let's do experiment, shall we? That's what the idea of this game is. Let's put center of lift on directly on center of mass. Now let's look for those wheels. Okay, since this is a basic aircraft, I think we'll use basic wheels. Okay, you over there. No, let's put you back over here. And let's get some wheels. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, yeah, symmetry to two, please. Okay, so is that going to be good? That's going to make the nose point downwards. And we don't want that. We want the nose to point upwards. So these wings will be pointing upwards to give us that um, the lift. Okay, so those wheels are no good. Let's try some of the other ones. What have we got here? Small landing gear. Yeah, I think they'll do. I won't start them off in the wings, I think. Okay, so what have we got here? That looks level. In fact, let's use these completely. <laughs> that looks terrible. <laughs> okay. And so we need the front one to be. Wait a minute. I think I did have it right. So now that nose will point upwards. Okay. Oh, yes. I almost forgot. I was just going to launch now and see what happened, but we've got no controls. Uh, okay. Aileron 1, I think. 
and I have no idea why don't these attach properly. Okay, we'll have to rotate them. Yeah. Let's put two sets on there. Okay, this is our first test. Test number one. Um, damn it. Let's get that center left over center mass. Hey, Prashto. I will call this. Um, well, the Wright brothers were the first ones to fly an aircraft. So we'll call it the Wright Bros. Mark 1, because we're going to do multiple iterations. This obviously is going to fly, but oh, hopefully it'll fly. <laughs> it should do fly, but whether it'll work properly, I don't know. Anyway, let's save that and go to the launch pad. And why I mean Mark 1? That's because save every iteration of your aircraft or wherever you're building, so any improvements you can, which don't improve it, you can go back and use the previous version. And then delete the ones you don't want once you've successful. Well, we won't be in this case. <laughs> anyway, meet you on the launch pad. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, Jebediah, the, our test pilot in the cockpit. Look, those wheels work, we're now pointing upwards, make it easier to take off. And I'm not sure, we may have put these ailerons, the wheels, in the wrong position. You're supposed to have them just behind your wheels so it pushes the back down, raises the nose, so you can take off. We may be close on this one, we may be able to do it. I see, I do know a few, one or two things about the aircraft. Anyway, let's engage the engines, go to two thirds thrust for our takeoff speed. And hey, presto. By the way, what is the takeoff speed? I do not know. <laughs> There's a lot I do not know. I know there are things like angling the wings in either that way, going front to back, angling them that way, or is it angling them going sideways? I can't remember. Whoa, yes, yes. Engaging SAS. Okay, gear it in. So we're done called drag. Right, let's level ourselves off. Let's level ourselves off so the prograde vector isn't going down. Disengage the SAS and we seem to be drifting upwards. Whoa, okay, that's a problem. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> we've done <it> stalled! <laughs> I didn't know you had a stall. Oh, damn it. Okay. So I think that's due to the center of mass. Oh, we're gonna die. No, okay, EVA. Haha, <laughs> EVA at the right time. Although the cockpit did survive, so Jebediah would have survived. Ooh, is he, gonna, is he floating up? I know they changed the hydrodynamics of the game, so I would love to play with submarine mods in the future. Uh, I'll be awesome if you could get your Kerbal to swim downwards, you know, orientate this, the direction, especially on EVAs, that would be handy. Anyway, let's revert this to space plane hangar. And let's try again. Okay, so, where is it? Center of lift was on center of mass. Let's solve this problem first. Now I have a feeling that center of lift in front of center of mass may not work, but let's give that a quick go. Um, let's rethink these wheels because they have to be just in front of the, the ailerons so we can use them to push up. Okay, let's go ahead. This is Mark II. Save launch. Now I don't think this one will work. I'm now convinced that the center of mass has to be behind the center of sorry, the center of lift has to be behind the center of mass. And yes, I'm taking you through the loading screens. Oh, suck it. <laughs> yes, I think we have messed up it. Let's give her a quick go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you definitely have to do that. Good. Yeah, obviously. Beep. 
<laughs> okay, let's go back to the drawing board, back to the v uh, VAB. I keep on going on a space plane angle VAB. The sacrilege. Okay, so let's alter this again. Center mass, center lift. Okay, we need the center lift behind the center mass. I'm not sure how far behind. Let's do it a balls width. <laughs> how big are your balls? Okay, so behind, yeah, just in front of the aileron, so we get lift. Let's go ahead, name this mark three, save, launch. Now at the moment we're doing failures versus successes and see what will happen. Obviously I'm not entirely sure how successful this be, maybe, but we're just solving one problem at a time. And this is how you do engineering. Well, in the most part. Normally you'd probably have a couple of teams, say like someone working on the center of mass prop versus the center lift problem. So let's see what we get here. Center of mass, center of lift remember is behind the center of mass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, oh, we've lost the wing. We don't seem to have a stability issue with, with that. So let's go ahead and fix that one problem. Let's go ahead. I know I said I wouldn't. Um, let's go ahead. Oh, come on, you. Um, fix these wheels on the wings. Okay. So there they are, they're slightly off angle, aren't they? Bum bum. Perfect. Okay, this one's Mark IV now. Let's go ahead and launch. That should solve the sp stability issue on the runway. Every little problem you have to engineer through. Now, if that doesn't work, we can spread the wheels a little wider on the wings. I know th there are some planes out there where the wheels are on the edge of the wings. But let's go ahead and take off. Let's go full thrust. Engage the SAS. Let's disengage the torque on the capsule, which I forgot about. The Ooh. Okay, so the wheels on the wings are not the good idea. Hmm, let me think about this and let me meet you in the uh, space plane hangar. Okay, so all I've done is I've put the wheels right out there on the wings. This hopefully will improve our design. Let's go ahead, spool up our engine. Because these engines take a bit of time to spool up on their thrust. See? Engage the SAS. I'll leave the talk on the capsule up and running at the moment. Uh, we have to be careful by the look of it. Okay, gear in. Now I forgot to check the center mass. That's, that is flying quite well. What happens if I take the SAS off? Okay, we do a slow drop down, which seemed to be inherent of the Aries A3. Whoa, and oh, we're doing a spin around again. <laughs> we're losing control. Okay, so. And Jebediah has died. Ah, oh, well. Nothing we can do about that now. Back to the drawing board. Okay, so, um, two things I was thinking of doing. First off, central lift. Back a bit more. Okay, no, too far. Perhaps it's too close to the center of mass, I'm not sure. Also, another thing we're gonna do to fix this, hopefully. Yeah, well, you'll do. 
a nice pair of winglets on the back. Not only will this give us rudder control, which is right left on the keypad, or your joystick, but it'll also give us stability in that it'll be a wing cut through the air, hopefully making us point forward. Now let's go ahead, say this is our Mark 6, and launch. Okay, so here we go again. Let's thrust up. Still, I don't like the idea of that being so low. Perhaps we can higher this wheel up on the front further, or something. But let's see what we get anyway. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're definitely veering off course. We're taking off anyway. Let's engage the SAS. Gear up. Now, I'm not going full thrust like last time. Perhaps there's a limit that we can do this to. Spool up a bit. I know that they should be okay at 200. Well, let's press F12. I keep on forgetting about that. Look at that F12. Giving you the lift of your wings. The control of the ailerons, which are pulling down, if I pull up, pull down, if I push down, they go up. Okay, and that also gives us our drag vectors. Now that is providing drag by here, keeping us going straight. Yes, <laughs> the, the wing tail, the tail is working. Okay, let's disengage cabin torque okay so disabled reaction wheel for the cabin now let disable SES that's a pretty stable flight although we are increasing speeds quite fast so let's spool down let's do a little climb here engage the SS on very responsive let's put fine control on let's do a couple of s turns this is what the shuttle would have done coming into the atmosphere it would have done s turns to bleed off some of its speed and that's what we're doing we're using the fact that we're changing our angle from the pro gray vector you can see by here to reduce our speed down to 200 okay that's good let's level off a bit Okay, that's stable. SAS off. So, slightly slower speed, you do get a bit more of a drop off. But we've got control. That's where I think is what we're sacrificing here. Now, if we had when we had it in the center, we were spinning out control and control only. <laughs> and I think the idea behind that is the center of mass. If you have the center of lift around there, you're pulling it up and it everything can flip around too easy. I'm trying to show my hand, but I'll use the mouse. Everything can easily flip around that center of mass, and that's why you need the center lift behind the center of mass. Otherwise, if you don't, then as you do, if it's in front, you'll plummet over and everything. And if it's too in the middle, you'll if it's in front, it'll pull the front of the aircraft up and you'll go spin it upwards. So having it behind, just far enough, it looks like it works quite well. And we're cruising quite fairly good at 200 meters per second. So I've had to split this video into two, otherwise it'd be really long. So let me know in the description below if you enjoyed this sort of format, where we're just messing around in Kerbal Space Program, learning new things. So there'll be a part two as i said to so get another chance to comment to whatever anyway all i can say now is i'm orbiter trust me i'm now an, an aerodynamic engineer <laughs> cool